not like we have a touring period and then we'll go in the studio to make an album. It's happening all the time, you know, yeah, with yeah. two people on the road and somebody at home. And then occasionally, like I remember, I think it was a day in your house where I think we had two days and we wrote like five songs a day. That was the first time I remember thinking we really need to start writing for the next album. the acoustic, a lot of the tracks um, I'll be in the studio. That, that we started working on sort of started from from like little ideas, you know, some on a guitar, some on a piano, some maybe from something written down on a piece of paper in a restaurant. When people shout, um, they think the world listens, um, but nobody really listens when you're shouting, uh, when you're really quiet. When you whisper, people really do listen, and and in this sort of dance music world of today, I feel like this this sort of fight for you know who can be the loudest and who can make the most noise and get the most tension and and all the while you know maybe the real power is in something really small and 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 elegant. So let's go to the end of the first chorus and see how we get on. Yeah. Okay. Well, how do the angels heels with fire and brimstone wheels? The meadows start with bones and flowers and tears. Okay. I mean, all, all the, the, the themes and the concepts and everything else that we sort of put on these albums, and I think it's true of group therapy and this one, they're kind of retrofitted. But it's amazing when when the track started becoming more ready and we started having what sort of resembled an album and then suddenly you start seeing how they connect. We're hot on the angels' heels With fire and brimstone wheels The music was um, music that Pavo actually wrote for his dad's funeral. The lyrics are a bit of a mystery to me. I don't know where it came from. I don't know why I thought of those things. Why a shipwreck? I mean, we're in 2014 or 13 as it was. I don't know why that imagery came out of the music. It's just, that's a wonderful thing. When you, when you get in that zone and you just, you don't have to think about what to write about. It just comes out when you're singing, literally, you know, singing the melody and the words come out entwined. You know, it's the easiest thing. And then the bits, the gaps were, the hard bits to fill in. We've always been free actually when we've done albums. We've never really sort of focused on, you know, what other dance albums are like and tried to, you know, do an album just like this other artist. Because we did acoustic, it enabled us to come back and do a proper dance album as well. Because we'd done this acoustic thing, so maybe had less to prove in that area. <laughs> Sometimes with these tracks, if you've got too many synth elements, it just, they also date really quickly um, as songs, whereas guitars and bass and all that sort of stuff is kind of timeless. So although I'm absolutely terrible at playing bass, um, I can edit it together afterwards on there and just like pick little bits um, that I like and, and re-time it all because, um, yeah, my timing's pretty terrible as well. So I saw a real bravery in taking something really personal and sharing it with people. And, and you know, I don't know, maybe I've, I'd al always been a little shy and I thought, you know, you can't do that somehow. It's like private, you don't do that. The fact that, that I see people so close to me doing it so well, yeah. it was a really freeing, freeing thing for me. Even though I'm sure those songs, as the songs that all of us write, are kind of intensely personal, it's not like you're giving away names and addresses. They're, <laughs> they're snapshots of emotion and idea and the revelation for me with, with Above and Beyond is that those intensely personal, very individual things can work in a club with 10,000 people in because actually yeah. there's an awful lot of humanity and emotion that we share, a lot of experiences that we feel the same way about and 
to be able to do that for me, certainly, personally, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's, that's the most fulfilling part of being in a band is that you get to express yourself truly, honestly, and it gets people excited. That, that yeah. is, that's fantastic. So we're going G minor. Yeah. To D minor. C. C. Maybe I have waited for too long. Maybe I got caught up in the storm. You know, I've I've always thought of Justine is an almost sort of motherly figure and, and the way her voice works for me, it's almost like, you know, someone singing right, right, being really close to you and singing to your ear. It's got that sort of motherly thing about it. In almost every case when you get Alex to sing a song, it's much better than the demo vocal. He's got this uh, sincerity, I think. He's got a beautiful tone to his voice and he's got, my mum loves this about him, he's got a really great diction like Frank Sinatra. He, he says every word, he, he sings every word so you can hear the lyrics and I think that's really all you could ask for from a singer as well as his smouldering good looks that all my girlfriends keep telling me. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried until they're in my despair Try to forget and not to care. All right, yeah, I'll just start it playing just before it hits okay. the outro. The great thing about Andrew is like a kind of quarterback and a mother hen, and <laughs> and in some ways the kind of producer behind the producer because I think he's he's because he's here all the time. Um, he gets a kind of common strand of understanding of what's important to you when you're not yeah. here. He can explain that to me and. Yeah, he's um, as much of a sort of group therapist, isn't he, as a yeah. <laughs> as, as yeah. a producer. Yeah, I mean Gemma's voice is so delicate. I couldn't believe how quietly she sang. Um, you know, at first I was, almost, is that it? Because it, the level coming in to the desk was so low. But once you embrace that and you know work with that, it's so beautiful and delicate. I think we should just sort of run through the whole song and then see how it goes, and then pick okay. up on any bits that we're not happy with. That was so good. You got that lovely little bit of kind of croakiness in there that we've been That's trying it. trying to capture. But like no one on earth sounds like Zoe. I think she's one of the most unique sounding singers that that I know or ever had a chance to work with. There's a kind of humanity and a humility and a and an awareness of both sides of the argument, and I think that's where really great songs come, and she's always been great at that. And I think the songs that she's done for this album demonstrate not only that, but this extraordinary voice that she has. She really genuinely sounds like nobody else. We'll start you at the beginning, okay. and then um, take it from there, yeah? Right, Captain John O, let's go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> We're ready to roll. You know, you absolutely nailed the the first verse, and the bridge, and the chorus, <laughs> and, and the whole second song. Add some more layers in and spread them out. Do the Zoe big thing, and I think it's, I don't know, I think that's going to be awesome. And it sounds so personal, it's like, I don't know, it just sounds so heartfelt. That's brilliant. Oh, can I join in as well? Group <laughs> yeah, group bug. Group therapy hug. Group therapy <laughs> I think we've, we've had this sort of pendulum of self-doubt through to, certainly I have anyway, in the making of this album, self-doubt through to confidence, self-doubt um, through confidence, because, you know, when we've been mixing records, when we've been writing, there's been, like, moments where we've, you know, maybe individually or, you know, as a group lacked belief in certain songs, lacked, you know, belief in the, the mix of something, and, and then it's all come together in the end, which is really, really rewarding. And I think that's, that's personally why I keep doing it, because I feel like 
that challenge never goes away. And I, I've been thinking about this quite a lot lately because, you know, why are we still making dance music? Why are we still making records, albums, doing gigs? It's because there's still a challenge there and it's still exciting. Mm -hmm.